I'm Joel Hewitt, a subject matter expert with the Homeland Defense and Security Information Analysis Center. And today we're talking about synthetic blood products and their use by DOD. Synthetic blood products are just what they sound like. They are blood component replacements made in a laboratory. So why the interest in synthetic blood? Real blood has to be donated from other people. And while screening methods are very good, the threat of contamination remains. Blood lasts for only a few hours if not refrigerated or frozen, and even if kept cold, can only last about 30 to 40 days. Finally, it's very challenging to get blood products into austere environments. Creating all of the components in blood is very difficult. As a result, R&D for synthetic blood typically focuses on developing individual components of blood. Although we can reproduce the physical shape of these components, what we're really interested in is recreating their functionality. This can happen in one of a few ways. Researchers have developed ways to recreate the oxygen transport capability of red blood cells. This is done using either perfluorochemical-based particles or hemoglobin-based particles. These are known as oxygen carriers as they mimic the function of red blood cells by bringing oxygen to tissues. Hemoglobin-based particles are preferred, as this is the primary molecule that delivers oxygen throughout the body. However, in synthetic blood products, the hemoglobin can often build up and cause toxicity. Because of this, the Food and Drug Administration has been researching the effects of a protein called haptoglobin, which binds to extra hemoglobin and reduces the toxic buildup. Platelets are another important component of blood, as they are necessary for clotting. Researchers have used a variety of materials, including polymers and nanomaterials, to recreate the clotting function of platelets. Now that we've covered what synthetic blood products are, let's talk a little bit about what DOD's research and development interests are in this area. Using synthetic blood products offers several benefits. Some products may last as long as one to two years, even if not kept cold. There is no reliance on blood donors. And since synthetic blood doesn't have to be kept cold or sent on demand, it can be carried at any time and taken anywhere to be used when needed. DOD has supported research for the development of a product called erythromer which is a nanoscale synthetic polymer that contains purified human hemoglobin. Erythromer can be freeze-dried and stored at ambient temperatures for long periods of time. In addition to recreating the oxygen transport function of red blood cells, DOD is also looking at ways of incorporating functionality into synthetic blood. Researchers at the U.S. Army Institute for Surgical Research are collaborating with Case Western Reserve University to evaluate the therapeutic impact of synthoplate. Synthoplate is a synthetic nanoplatelet which can be administered intravenously to help promote clotting. DOD has researched other methods to improve the combat blood supply. For example, DARPA has worked with private industry to research a technique known as blood farming, which involves the growing of blood in a lab using umbilical cord stem cells. Synthetic blood doesn't just apply to humans. It can also benefit military working dogs who are vulnerable to blood loss and combat. However, there is only one product, oxyglobin, that is currently approved by the FDA for use in canines. It does not contain red blood cells, but is composed of cross-linked hemoglobin molecules that help improve oxygen transfer during infusion. Thanks for joining us today, and don't forget to check out hdiac.org and follow us on social media.